So welcome everyone uh, to my three months program report. Uh, my name is uh, Mohsen Dianati. I'm a general dentist and uh, MSc student at the Department of Prosthodontics, Semmelweis University. My supervisor is uh, Daniel Lake, and my uh, SMS is Alexander Wenning. My vision is a world without periodontitis, and uh, my mission is to find the optimal adjunctive periodontal treatment therapies. So I have only one project ongoing, investigating the adjunctive therapy options for periodontitis, which was started on September 2024, and uh, of course, this is done by a systematic review and meta-analysis. So uh, a little bit about background. Periodontitis is a uh, multifactorial chronic inflammatory disease characterized by attachment loss. 20 to 50% of the population have periodontal problems in developing countries. Scaling and root planning is the gold standard method in the very first phase of periodontal treatment, which, which is non-surgical periodontal therapy, which together with chlorhexidine is, uh, uh, is a widely used material uh, to treat and address these periodontal problems. But of course, just like other materials, it has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, such as discoloration, irritation, burning sensation. <clears throat> On the other side, uh, we have a wide range of uh, different materials available on the market, uh, such as oxygen-based therapies, and um, topically applied antibiotics that can be used to either treat or prevent the disease. Uh, however, uh, Oxygen-based therapies have no proven disadvantage, and that's the main uh, advantage of them. So my aim here is to find the uh, optimal and the best adjunctive uh, periodontal treatment therapy. So uh, in order to uh, address this question, um, I, I use the uh, PICO framework. Uh, what are the most effective adjunctive options for pa patients with periodontitis? My population uh, is, the, uh, is, the, uh, is the patients with periodontitis. My interventions are oxygen-based therapy compared with chlorhexidine and antibiotics. And uh, our main outcomes uh, is periodontal pocket depth reduction, clinical attachment level gain, uh, uh, and also bleeding on probing, plaque index, and gingival index. In addition, we also investigate the microbiological uh, parameters as the secondary outcomes, particularly the members of a uh, red complex. Uh, so uh, our, our uh, clinical implication is uh, treat the patients with periodontitis. And this is just a general overview to show you uh, I'm not only uh, working, um, comparing these uh, interventions uh, uh, when uh, oxygen, chlorhexidine, and antibiotics compared to SR when uh, scaling and root planning is done alone or with placebo, but also I'm comparing uh, chlorhexidine and oxygen and antibiotics together in a network meta format. So this is my search key, uh, which I submitted on uh, November 13, I conducted it on three uh, databases, Medline, uh, Embase, and uh, Cochrane, and these key articles uh, are found below. Um, uh, about my preliminary search, I, I, uh, I didn't found any prosper registration and any systematic reviews. So these are my key articles, uh, the first half comparing oxygen-based therapies to conventional treatments, uh, SRP alone and with the same outcomes uh, that I already talked about and all of them are RCTs. These are the second half comparing chlorhexidine to SRP alone and uh, uh, having the same outcomes and all of them were RCTs. Uh, some of them use chlorhexidine gel, some of them chips and um, Basically, the material were the same, and the populations uh, in all of these um, key articles are, of course, patients with periodontitis. And regarding my uh, first key article uh, about strength, I can uh, mention innovative approach because of using uh, a special uh, 
type of material blue M oral gel, uh, which has a promising effect uh, on the uh, treatment of periodontitis. Uh, it, it has robust statistical analysis uh, as well, and also a clinical relevance uh, was very nice in this article. But on the other side, it, it was a single-blinded design, uh, short follow-up type, and uh, small sample size as their uh, limitation of this study. About the second key article, uh, this article actually uh, worked on uh, diabetic patients, so it, uh, it had a comprehensive outcome metrics, and also uh, it, uh, it used a rigorous methodology uh, by using the sec uh, double-blinded design to, to, to decrease the risk of bias. And uh, also, uh, uh, as um, the previous key article, it, uh, it just uh, had a short-term follow-up and a small sample size. And my third one has um, um, just a, a, little bit, a little bit difference of oxygen therapy. It used a special kind of uh, oxygen flow. Uh, but otherwise, it, uh, it was a nice uh, article, and it just only focused on smokers. And, um, um, and of course, I'm going to uh, investigate it more. So this is my uh, flow chart selection. Uh, before the applicator removal, I had 14,000, and after 8,000, and uh, the number of eligible articles, uh, 1,400. And uh, regarding the progress, I, we have done title abstract selection, and uh, currently I'm on full text selection phase and I would like to uh, finish my presentation with the quote, science uh, knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. Uh, thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you for the presentation. Who has any question? Thank you for your presentation. This blue and gel sounds very promising. Can you please describe me more detailed in which phase of the full period treatment you use this gel? Yes, thank you very much for your uh, question. So it has a um, um, some kind of different uh, mechanism of action. So um, it increases uh, uh, oxygen uh, to the, to the uh, to the uh, working, uh, to the um, healing area uh, without causing uh, any disruption uh, in the, uh, in the biofilm. And of course, uh, it, can, it can be used uh, whenever the wound healing is, uh, is needed. Uh, before, uh, before the therapy can be used as an adjunctive uh, mouthwashes, it has mouthwash, uh, toothpaste, etc. during the treatment. But of course, these are all adjunctive, no, uh, cannot be used, for example, in the, in the surgical. Surgical, it's, um, it's much better in the non-surgical phase. Uh, and uh, um, yes, that's pretty much of it. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. It was really nice. I was wondering that uh, you've mentioned that uh, uh, you're investigating the blue M gel, the oxygen-based therapy. Uh, why is it so important uh, in your project? Uh, well, um, because um, so 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 there is an un, un, always an unmet need, uh, like uh, the using of chlorhexidine has been. Uh, associated with a lot of uh, side effects, like a burning sensation, a tooth uh, discoloration, etc. But uh, these materials have uh, no proven disadvantage and no proven side effects. That's why um, they have a very uh, nice effect without any, of course, uh, side effects. Uh, that, that's why I chose this topic to uh, work in. Thank you for your answer. You're welcome. Uh, so I have two questions for you. Too quickly, I'll ask: How long is this uh, blue M treatment generally? Um, it it uses a uh, very particular uh, mechanism of action, like uh, twenty to um, twenty minutes. So it uh, it brings uh, uh, slow um, slow amount of um, I mean uh, the highly concentrated oxygen in a slow continuous manner about. Um, 20 to uh, 30 minutes. Okay, and after how many uses do you see uh, considerable results of this therapy? 
Uh, could you please? Remember? So after how many uses do you see considerable results, like healing results? How many times does the patient have to use it to witness S mm, uh, w progress? Um, there, is, uh, there is not really uh, like very strict rule how many times, but of course um, um, two, two or three times a day uh, could be used uh, for a long period of time. Uh, so, so it can um, it can exert it, its effects, but of course, um, more um, uh, <clears throat> investigations uh, are needed to evaluate its uh, effects on Thank the you. patients. Thank you for your nice presentation, and I have a very basic question: How does it release the oxygen from the gel? Okay. Um, so it has a, um, a complex sodium perborate, uh, lactoferrin, and um, basically an, uh, honey xylitol, and uh, these are all in, uh, as their components. So after con contacting with the uh, uh, oral saliva, uh, it decomposes to hydrogen peroxide, and, uh, and uh, therefore in this way it uh, releases uh, high amount of uh, oxygen in a uh, controlled manner. And um, basically, uh, that's how it works. Have you made any difference if the patient has only natural teeth or has a fixed partial denture? Because maybe the fixed partial denture can influence uh, more uh, the perio condition uh, than, for example, the core accident. So uh, what is the question again? Uh, was there any difference in the groups if the patient has only natural teeth or the page, patient has also fixed partial denture? Uh, yes, of course. So, um, and as a novel material, the uh, investigations uh, uh, were, were kind of a few. So, uh, the more investigations are, are needed and uh, researches regarding this are ongoing. But uh, uh, as we found out, these have no uh, really uh, um, effects and, or no negative effects or proven disadvantage on the both teeth or prosthesis, which, for example, other materials, chlorhexidine, could have staining on the prosthesis when, uh, when, when applied. But, but these materials, no. But of course, the investigations needed more uh, to, the, to see uh, the, the uh, different uh, outcomes. Yes.